So for this problem, ladies and gentlemen, what they're asking us to do is to graph, um, to go ahead and graph this, right? So we're going to do the exact same thing that we've done. Just because we notice now this is, we're talking about slant asymptotes, you're still going to apply the exact same rules. The first thing I like to do, find the vertical. So find the vertical asymptote. So the vertical asymptote is when our denominator polynomial equals 0. Right? Without doing all my work, I'm going to get this a little bit faster. x equals 1 half. Is that right? Follow me? Add the 1, divide the 2. Yes? OK. So. So let's graph that. So 1, 2, 3, 4. At 1, we'll do 1 half. Perfect, right? All right, so now we go ahead and find, determine the horizontal. So what we notice is the horizontal, that our a of x, our degree of our a of x function is larger than the degree of our b of x, right? So therefore, there's no horizontal. All right. Now, since there's no horizontal, slant, horizontal, now I need to look into the slant possibility. So now I look at the difference of the two degrees. Do I have a difference of a degree? Do I have a difference of one between my degrees? Yeah. Yes. So now what I need to do to determine the slant, I need to divide them, and I'm going to use long division. Now. Is it possible to use synthetic, and why would we need to use synthetic? When could we use synthetic? Does anybody remember this one? No. OK, we could use synthetic division for this problem. The only time we're going to use synthetic division is when, you're, when your divisor is a linear binomial. Well, this one is linear because it's x raised to the first power, and it is a binomial. So we could use synthetic division, but let's get a little practice with uh, um, uh, long division. So we say 2x divides into x squared. Well, 2 divides into 1, 1 half. x divides into x squared, x times. And you must now, let's double check to make sure that works. Now remember, once you have this, you got to multiply this term times both of your divisors. So 1 half times x is x squared, right? Remember, whenever you multiply this number back, you have to get that same. Um, same term. Okay, Ava? Then I do 1 half times x, which is going to be a negative 1 half x. Now, the next thing we do, if you guys remember, we have to subtract the whole row. So x squared minus x squared is just 0x squared, right? So that always goes to 0. But now I have 4x minus 1 half x. Whew. You got to have them be the same denominators, right? I'm sorry. That is, um, no, it's plus. It's minus a negative, right? So now I need to add these up. So therefore, instead of 4, I need to rewrite this as 8 over 2, right? So this is really 9 fourths x. Yes? Yes? Good. So therefore, um, 4x plus 1 half is going to be 9 over 4, x, and then plus 4. So now we say 2x divides into 9 fourths. Huh? You have what? Oh, what am I doing? That's 9 halves. Sorry. What am I doing? Why am I adding it to 4? I was thinking because I knew they, I was looking back at my problem. It's 9 halves, though, right? It's 9 over 2. Correct? OK. So 2 divides into this how many times? 9 over 4. Let's check our math. How do we know if that's correct? Remember, you multiply 9, ha 9 fourths times 2x. 9 fourths times 2x is 9 halves x. 9 fourths times negative 1 is a negative 9 over 
1. Then you subtract the rows. This, again, goes to 0. And then, ladies and gentlemen, you could do, um, sorry, it's negative 9 fourths. You can do 4 minus a negative 9 fourths. But ladies and gentlemen, is an x going to divide into that number anyways? No. So guess what? That's your remainder. And I said slant asymptotes. Do you deal with the remainders? No. So therefore, our equation for our slant asymptote is y equals our quotient. So now we need to graph that. All right. So how are you going to graph that? Well, remember, all linear equations we can write in y equals mx plus b form, where b is my y-intercept. So the y-intercept is at 9 fourths, which is 2.25. So let's just go. So let's just go up to 2. 2.25 is going to be roughly around there. And then we're going up 1 over 2. Up 1 over 2. Up 1 over 2. So we're roughly going to have a graph or an asymptote that's going to follow that line. Does everybody see what I did with that? Yes, kind of. Yes, no, maybe so. All right. So now we did the long division to find our slant asymptote. Now what we're simply going to do is still we need to find our x and y intercepts. All right. So let's do the x-intercept. x-intercept is when y equals 0. 0 equals x squared plus 4x plus 4 divided by 2x minus 1. Here we need to get this off the bottom, so we multiply 2x minus 1 on both sides. That goes to 0. That divides out to 1. So 0 equals x squared plus 4x plus 4. We can solve this one by factoring. 0 equals x plus 2 squared. x equals negative 2. Yes? So we could say at negative 2, we have, a, uh, we have an asymptote. Um, which one am I doing? I'm doing three. Oh, OK. Um, and then we need to uh, find our y-intercept. So y-intercept is going to be f of x equals 0 squared plus 4 times 0 plus 4 divided by 2 times 0 minus 1. So then we end up getting 4, right? That's not right. What did I do wrong? 4 over negative 1. 4 over negative 1, thank you. Thank you, so it's negative 4, right? So now we go 1, 2, 3, 4. OK, now let's go and take a look at this, guys. All right. If we're going to graph this, we still have to pick two points to the right, which I'll go through in a second. But ladies and gentlemen, remember we talked about our asymptotes. Our graph has to approach these two lines, right? It has to approach our, horizon or our vertical asymptote, and it has to approach our horizontal asymptote. So for this graph to approach, it has to go through these two points, all right? And then it's also going to have to approach these two lines. Now, how do I know the graph only touches at this point and then rebounds? If you guys remember, it's not a whole big thing right now, but since this 0 has a multiplicity of 2, we talked about this in the last chapter. Since this has a multiplicity of 2, it touches the graph but does not cross. So it has, since it has an even multiplicity, it touches the graph but does not cross. So therefore, I know that it, it just touches and rebounds. But you guys, that's not our main focal point right now. Now let's pick two points to the right. So let's do f of 1. So if I was to do f of 1, I do 1 squared plus 4 times 1 plus 4 divided by 2 times 1 minus 1. So we get 1 squared um, plus 4 is 5 plus 4 is 9. And then this becomes 2 times 1 is 2, 9 over 1. So at 1, I go up to 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then let's do f of 2. So I do 2 squared plus 4 times 2 plus 4 divided by 2 times 2 minus 1. So this is 4 plus 8, which is 12, so equals 16. 
4, 16 divided by 3 is going to be 5 and 1 third, right? So we go over 2, and we go up 5 and 1 third. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1 third. So what you guys are going to see is the graph is going to be somewhat of a res um, the same thing as our other graph going right there. I know my graph's not perfect. You guys are going to have grid lines. I don't have grid lines, but you can see that these are like kind of the exact opposite or the same graphs, just in different parts. OK? So that is how you do a slant. Yes? Sure. OK. I know these are uh, long, long videos. So I'm just going to end it.